and welcome back. It is Simon Short Podcast. Ben is here. John is here. We are going into our draft war room series for the AFC West, and nobody else to do this with in the entire world. Ben Parker is here to give us a draft plan for the uh, AFC West and Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. So, Ben, what's going on with Kansas City, and which of me and John is the worst-ranked owner in the NFL? Mm, that's a that's a good question okay so what what am i looking at vikings owner and steelers on no no you're the uh (laughs) i'll decide later (laughs) (laughs) now if listen if you're a chiefs gm right now and you man is there any better spot in north america right now i mean it's boy you were just yeah so anyway i've got a very crude plan together for the chiefs because of course i've studied them for six years now and there's a lot of directions they could go because they got a few needs. But again, when you start off with Mahomes and Reed and you bring back Chris Jones and, and you got guys, you know, got Travis Kelsey there and you got a decent secondary, you know that you've always got a chance no matter what you do. So again, you don't feel like you have to do anything. But here, here's what I'm looking at. I'm going to start at the bottom here. For my picks, 159, 173, 252, I'm looking at the secondary there. And the reason is it looks like Snead is on his way out of town. And I don't feel obligated to replace him, but I have shown over the past two, three, four seasons with two different defensive backs coaches that I am really good at bringing in guys in the secondary. This started back with Traverius Ward about five years ago um, on a uh, on a, a rookie. I, no, I think they traded for him maybe from the Cowboys possibly. But anyway, they've been doing this for quite a few years, bringing guys in, draft, develop, and scheme them up and then watch them leave and bring the next guy in. So so Tyron Matthew has come through the door, not a guy that drafted, but they were able to use him. They have been just fine. So I want to I want to continue that. I want to continue to bring guys in the pipeline secondary that it looks like I'm really good at drafting and developing. So I just want to keep keep that up. I'm working with my strength there. Instead of trying to attack a weakness, I'm building on my strength. I'm really good at drafting and developing defensive backs. So I want to keep that going. Um, with my middle round picks, 131, 158, somewhere in there, I'm looking at linebacker because I think it was Willie Gay that had to go. And um, Drew Tranquil probably is not going to be around for a long time. So I'd love to kind of keep guys in the mix there at linebacker. And I like some of the linebackers this year. So I may even look at them as early as 64, pick 64, what I've got. I might even be willing to trade up from 64. If one of the two guys that I like personally, Cooper and uh, and Wilson, I don't think they're going to be there at 64, but if they're sitting there at, say, 49.50, I might be willing to look to trade up from there to catch my linebacker. But now let's get to the two spots where I really, really want to focus, and and this is going to be all in on this no matter what. It's going to start with wide receiver. Um, Can the Chiefs win without them? Yes, they've shown that. But I don't want to keep asking Mahomes to do that. It's not fair to him. It's not fair to the team. It's obvious it limits what he can do. So I want to make sure over the next five years that he's got plenty of guys to throw the football to. And that starts with this year's draft. I, I My attitude is when a draft is this deep at one position, and it is a wide receiver, I'm not going to take my time and just pick whoever falls to me. I'm going to try to get two of these guys. And the fact that we signed Hollywood Brown, I think it was just a few days ago, doesn't change that at all. I'm looking to bring in not one, but two of these wide receivers. And that starts right there in the first round with either um, an an AD, uh, Adonai Mitchell from Texas, who's your physical type receiver, or a Ladd McConkie, who we've already mentioned on here from Georgia, who's more of that speed crossing route kind of guy. I'm going to be looking hard at 32 for wide receiver. And then I'm going to add to that, no later than the fourth round, somewhere between rounds two and four, I'm going to add another receiver. So it could be a Roman Wilson, the explosive guy from Michigan. It could be a Jacob Cowan, who's more of a gadget guy from Arizona, but seems to find the end zone. It could be the aforementioned Xavier Leggett, who is a guy that I think is not mentioned very much compared to what he has shown. Um, It could be any of those guys. Love those guys. We could even bring in the Johnny Wilson guy, the, the huge tall guy. Um, to basically play the big slot, if you will. Got a lot of guys, and we're going to bring in two of them. There's no question about it. So that's going to be my focus. Wide receiver, bring the guys in, give Mahomes at least two guys here that gives us a chance to really shake up this wide receiver room and give him people to throw to for years to come. Because Kelsey's going to be gone at some point. 
I, I can't replace that. No matter what, I can't replace Kelsey, but I can replace that overall production by just making sure Mahomes has people to throw to. So that's where I'm going. Tackle's an issue. Has been ever since I let go of uh, Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher two, three years ago. It's been a big issue. Can I scheme around that? Sure, I can. I can keep on scheming around that. My interior offensive line is excellent, but I don't want to. I'd love to start bringing in guys that tackle, legit guys, not fifth rounders, legit guys. I think there's a chance, and, and again, we've already mentioned this guy, but Jordan Morgan from Arizona, um, I think there's a chance that he could be a legit tackle for me. Dominant, maybe not, but just legit. I just need legit. And his athleticism out there in the flats moving around, if I want to use that, Chiefs don't always, but if I want to use that, I can. Love the athleticism over there. So do I really want to bring in another project at tackle? I haven't necessarily shown that I can develop tackles. I can de develop interior O-line, but not so much tackles. I'm not sure I want to do that. So that's why I'm looking at Jordan, uh, Jordan Morgan here, who seems to be pretty well set, pretty well polished. I just kind of add to it. So that's where I'm looking at. It's a crude plan, but it's one that I've got my heart set on. So, John, I'll start with you. Uh, questions on that? Yeah, so I love uh, <clears throat> I love double dipping at receiver um, because you do have a Kelsey retirement looming. You never know when he's going to call it quits. If we get that three-peat this year, he might hang him up. Um, and, and I think your head's in the right spot as far as the archetype goes as well because – Yes, we've got that field stretcher in Hollywood Brown. We've got the guy with like the lowest average depth of target uh, in the league in Rasheed Rice. So I think finding a guy who can win in that intermediate, a, a, a contested catch winner, you know, like an A.D. Mitchell, um, even yeah later on Xavier Leggett. I think that's the archetype you're looking for. Um, and outside of that, if you're looking to replace what you get from Kelsey, it's kind of that just find the soft spot in the zone guy. Just that heady, um, you know, really good field awareness kind of guy, whether that's at tight end or it's a lad McConkey type. Um, I, I think right. those are the two, you know, biggest needs is a guy who can win contested catches because Rasheed Rice has the body for it, but he's not a good contested catch winner. He had like a 30% contested catch rate or something like that. Um so that, that's that's the big thing for me is is replacing what you get from Kelsey and finding someone who can win in the intermediate. So I think your head's in the right spot there. And, you know, at first, when you first said it, I, I thought you were overvaluing linebacker in this particular draft. But you think about the way Spagnolo deployed those linebackers last season um, and how integral that was to the functionality of the defense. I mean, the way he used uh, Leo Chanel, um and uh, Tranquil, as well as Nick Bolton, those guys were all crucial. He deployed four linebackers consistently um, and used those different skill sets. So, you know, that was my initial – I was going to kind of push back on that a little bit. But once you finish your spiel, I was kind of right there with you. Um, and, yeah, let's need go wherever, dude. We'll find another Jalen Watson or Justin Watson or whichever one's the defensive back, and we'll be ready to go. Jalen, I think, is the defense back. <laughs> um, I love it. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Ben, make you make a decision. Uh, the draft is ticking down, right? Uh, we're, we're moving through the first round. We're through the first 25 picks. Every tackle and receiver we have a round one grade on is going. Just they're all going. There, there's only been three defensive players drafted through the first 25 picks. It's It's all falling apart. We're very quickly realizing that between 32 and 64, we're only going to get like have the opportunity to get one guy at tackle between tackle and receiver that we even have a second round grade on. Right, AD Mitchell is going, Brian Thomas is going, uh, Kingsley Suamatia might be going here in a couple picks. Um, Patrick Paul went 16 to or 17 to the Jaguars because they're continuing to confuse everybody. It's all going off the rails. <laughs> so we're sitting there at 32. We're still six or seven spots away. And we're like, are we going to take Roman Wilson at 32? Is that where we're at right now? Um, how do you handle that? How would you handle that situation? Do you, do you say, 
you know, screw it, 32 and 64 and something next year to go to 27 and at least get one of our targets at those two positions. And then we have to, and then you have to forego the other one, right? What's the position you would forego in terms of a true round one, round two grade? And then you're reaching for a project uh, later on at the other spot. Um, or do you just sit and wait at 32 because we've got Patrick Mahomes and, you know, we, we've seen him make it work and we, we keep the draft capital uh, moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it's wide receiver. Uh, matter of fact, I'd be if that were the case, if, it, if everything was making a hot run on tackles and wide receivers, I would be tempted to just trade back to maybe 38 or 40 and then catch somebody in, the next, in that next round of wide receivers that I like. So that's a Keon Coleman who I absolutely love. The combine was not kind to him, but the tape is. The tape is really good to him. Um, Jalen Polk is under kind of an undervalued wide receiver coming out of Washington. Xavier Leggett, could, I could be first stabs on him at 38 or 40. Jalen McMillan is a guy that really nobody's talking about, wide receiver out of Washington. So I've got a Xavier Worthy is a guy who slipped from Texas. I've got five guys there I like. If I just trade back to 38 or 40, I'm probably not going to sit there at 32 and take – you know, a guy that I've got rated as 45 or 50, I'm probably just not going to do that. I can I can forego the tackle. I can I can give up tackle. I can't give up wide receiver. I'm not going to do another year without that. 